Greetings, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Welcome to the Aegis Biz and Tech Podcast. Today is a special edition. We're going to talk about something magical. We're talking about beer. We've got Matt here from the Tallahassee Beer Society, and we're going to talk about the $19 billion impact the beer industry has in our state, as well as local breweries, what 2020 has been like for them, and lots of other good stuff. Before we get started today, a little bit about Aegis Business Technologies. We provide IT support in North Florida. We've been doing it for 23 years. I am the CEO, Blake Dowling, and that is that. So, uh, what would you say a balanced diet is in 2020? <laughs> Stouts and porters, I don't know. That's Coming close. from a beer guy, it's got to be in that range, right? A beer in each hand. There you go. There you That's go. a balanced diet for us. That is your joke of the day. Thank you for not moaning or groaning, uh, Josh. You too. Um, you know, it's a it's a good thing at the Biz and Tech Podcast to start with a joke. We've been doing this podcast now for one year, so it's kind of a milestone. We're having yeah. a good time with it. But um, let's just dive right in, Matt. Tell us about uh, the, what you're up to. I know we were first introduced when I was writing a Florida politics column about the beer industry. And besides uh, talking about Strange Brew and uh, a weak Star Trek um, intro that I did, I don't know if you ended up reading the column, but to boldly drink beer where no one has drank before, that was kind of my <laughs> intro. Uh, but I'm really glad I got, to introduce, got introduced to you by Ben Graybar and got to learn about more about what you do on radio, on TV. You guys are doing awesome stuff. Tell me what's up. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Congratulations on one year. That's a big deal. Um, especially putting that, man, you've got a voice for this. I, you know, I do radio and I don't have a radio voice like you do, but, uh, I've got a face for radio says people. Uh, I do too. I'm right there with you, <laughs> but, uh, unfortunately they're watching us today. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, so much has been going on. I mean, uh, obviously the, the pandemic changed a lot of things, um, that, that, made a lot of stuff shift um good and bad you know it's 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 been um obviously having uh tasting rooms closed having uh to go to curbside for a while uh that's a huge hit uh, on the consumer side you had breweries rolling out incredible beers to go uh being able to order online pull up curbside and get a beer that may have been a beer that was only going to go out for a festival um something very limited release uh so for the consumer side uh, that portion's been pretty great. Um, on the brewer side, uh, you know, they started 2020 off with it was going to be a record year. Uh, everything was going really well. Everything was trending up in March, uh, middle of March. Obviously, pandemic hits, things drop off. Um, so they're off a little bit. They're starting to come back. If you look at, I don't have the beer numbers for November. We don't get those till the end of December. But uh, if you look at September, Everything is showing uptick. Tax returns are showing, awesome. you know, we're, we're getting up there. Um, you have a lot of really brave breweries, including one up here that opened during this. Um, we have one in Jackson County <laughs> in Campbellton, Little Campbellton over wow. there. Uh, Southern Fields Brewing, they opened in the middle of this um, and they're doing really well over there. They're killing it. So uh, it's been a bit, it's been a mixed bag, but overall uh, everything seems pretty healthy as we're starting to turn the corner here and and, um, you know, hopefully we can start getting the numbers back down. There's vaccines, but uh, uh, it's been it's been a mixed run. A lot going on for the Beer Society, that's for sure. Nice. So let's talk origin. When did uh, the society start? What, uh, what led to the creation of a beer society? Because it sounds like a very important decision. So uh, the order... Uh, always very important. Right. So it always starts with a beer, right? Every good mm. idea starts with a beer. Maybe not everyone, but uh, most, most good ideas start with beer. But... Uh, it actually started on social media. Um, Danny Aller, who's the co-founder of the Tallahassee Beer Society, my partner in all of this, um, he's very active on social media. Yes, Most he people is. know him. He was uh, uh, the Tallahassee Twitter mayor is kind of his unofficial title. Um, we both share love of all things Tallahassee. So he and I kind of started engaging over food uh, and then sports, uh, specifically the uh, Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight. Oh, nice. uh, he actually thought Conor McGregor would pull that out. I thought Floyd Mayweather's a boxer. Give me the boxer. Um, we had a bet, uh, meals at local restaurants. That was what was on the line. And uh, through that, he and I just kind of stirring it up on social media, seeing how much engagement we could get. Uh, he had an idea of 
let's really promote Tallahassee's beer scene. Let's uh, be the megaphone for the beer scene, so to speak. And uh, he invited me just knowing that we had kind of a good interplay, a different way of doing things, a different style. And uh, it started with six of us. There might have been like 12 at the table, but, right. but I think six bought in. Um, slowly over time, different endeavors have taken people off. Uh, you know, Tallahassee Soccer Club took Mike Bonfani. Um, uh, one was an athletic director that moved to the West Coast. But at the end of the day, it became Danny and I. And so uh, that's kind of the origin story. As Tallahassee's brewing scene grew, you know, in t- 2012, we had Proof, which wasn't even a brewer at the time. They were right. just a bottle shop. Um, got people really interested in beer. Uh, they started brewing, and then later you have Grasslands, um, who's unfortunately not not around anymore. But then you had uh, 2015, 16, 17, all had a new brewery in Tallahassee. So as they grew, we grew. Um, Do you have a total of how many breweries we have? So in there's the four in Tallahassee right we now. Um, we cover anywhere from East Point, Apalachicola, uh, Oyster City, uh, to Lake City to the east which is how Patter, and then we'll go over to Bay County and up into Georgia too. So we cover anywhere from like 12 to 15 breweries, but in Tallahassee specific, four breweries. Well, no, the cool thing about about beer is, you know, discovering a new one. Um, Proof gave me, gave me that this year. I was speaking at a McClay School's Founders Day, and um, I was the host, and we were doing trivia and all this different stuff, and the headmaster, he slid over a six-pack of La La Land, uh, it's like a thank you gesture with a McClay mug. And I'm like, hmm, I'll try this. And um, I did. I poured a glass. And it's the beer of the year, man. I love That's it. It's awesome. It's great stuff. You know, you balance it with your other products. I'm a big Budweiser fan. The Triangle team here, you know, supports the craft scene a lot with distribution efforts. I love um, what they do. And I love I love Big Red. I love me some Bud Heavy to mix it up in my beer, my balanced beer diet. <laughs> there you go. But uh, you mentioned um, a radio show. What's that all about? Uh, so it, it was an extension of what we were doing. In the beginning, we were all social media. So Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram came a little slower. But we initially were just trying to put out all of the beer release. What's going to be on tap? Um, and then what's everybody's hours? We were just trying to get everybody into the tasting room. There's right? lots of pun options available there for ton, radio. What's ton, on tap today? Yeah, yeah tons. Let's talk beer. Let's, what's brewing? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like, don't do it, man. Don't say it. Um, but uh, so we started with that. Um, we extended out to the Tallahassee Democrat. We had a column, a biweekly column. And uh, from that, the uh, general manager at Tallahassee's ESPN station 97.9 on FM, uh, came and said, have you guys ever thought about doing a radio show? And uh, the honest answer was no. <laughs> and the thought was pretty terrifying. Um, but he was from Ohio, and they, they had a pretty strong beer scene where he was at. Uh, they had a beer radio show. He said it did really great up there. And he saw we'd already built the following. So for him, it was kind of like a uh, kind of a slam dunk if, if we can get in front of a mic and do what we do. And how long uh, is the show? Uh, the show is 24 minutes airtime, so 30 minute. Um, it'll probably expand out to an hour here before too long. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 24 minutes goes really fast uh, when you're talking beer. Um, but it was a perfect extension of what we were already doing. It took a long time. There was a lot of back and forth for us right. to finally get it, uh, get the details ironed out and how it was going to work and then how we would do it. But uh it was just another, we're constantly trying to find ways to make sure people around the rest of the state know that Tallahassee's brewing good beer up here. Awesome. I saw one of your Tallahassee Democrat columns recently about Oyster City and uh, what they've been up to and what they've been able to achieve during a challenging year. You know, when, um, when I think about our business, you know, in technology, when we all started getting into pandemic mode over the summer, Florida Trend announced their best places to work in Florida. And an award really means something this year. You know, a merit-based award. It's all about our team. You know, not really about something specific, but just a whole team win. So I know those folks have to feel really awesome about uh, what they achieved. Tell us about that award. Two gold medals, is that accurate? And two at uh, the U.S. Beer Beer Open Championships. A mouthful there. Um, that is one of the premier beer festivals 
in definitely in the country and probably in the world. Did they uh, do that virtually this year or they I, did, I yeah. imagine it's a huge party normally. They did. Um, there were 6,000 entries. So to give you an idea, 6,000 beers. Entered. Wow. Um, from that, they had two winners. They had their um, mangrove pale ale. Um, and then we're going to have to edit this part because the second one escapes me for right now. <laughs> for right All now. Good. Um, they've always done well at that particular event. Hooter Brown, which is one that if you're around town, you're pretty familiar with. Well, between or- Danny and Greg Tish on Twitter, I've seen more Hooter Brown references than uh, you would ever think possible. Yeah, especially on Greg Tish there, for sure. Um, but Hooter Brown is one that's one that's always placed well up there. Um, so they've they've had, those were silvers that they won for Hooter Brown. So they've always done really well up there. But you're right, in this year, in 2020, these awards and festivals that maybe in other years were nice feathers in the cap, they really mean something this year. Because yeah. to be able to produce and produce top quality um, in a time where you're, you're really just scrambling to kind of keep yourself open a little bit, uh, it really speaks to what they're doing at Oyster City. And actually, this year, Tallahassee, this area started off with a lot of awards down at Best Florida Beer in Tampa, which is a really big one for the state. So Deep won down there, Ology won. Um, Oyster City also had won, won some awards down there. So Ology's great, right by the office. Love yeah. it. Yeah, it's been... Uh, so. It's been a really good year, really productive year on that front. So like I said, it's been a total mixed bag, but Tallahassee still in this area continues to put out high quality beer. That's awesome. Fantastic. So a 6,000 beer competition, would there be individuals in regarding to tasting all of these? How would that work? Because I've got a gross story that just popped into my head about tasting. <laughs> Uh, there are judges. Uh, they do break it all down into certain categories and classes. Right. So, you know, it's not uh, one beer versus 6,000. It may be your beer in a subcategory. Uh, it may be fruited beers ah, or pale ales. Uh, IPAs. How, uh, you know, and, and one of the ones they won for was Mill Pond Blonde. Uh, there it is. I knew it would come to me eventually. Mill Pond Blonde, that is a, a style. The blonde style of beer is very popular. Uh, every brewery has one, so to have to win in a core beer, in a beer that everybody makes, uh, that's a significant win for that's Oyster City. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that you put on the cans or put on the box because that sells. So, IPA. Somebody asked me last week at Brass Tap, "What does IPA stand for?" And I was like, "Indian Pale Ale." Uh, and the story I was told was the British back in the day were shipping their beer to India, and by the time it got there, it was stale. So one Briton man said, hey, put a lot of hops in it, right? And uh, by the time it got there, it was extremely hoppy, but it was still fresh. Is that story accurate as far as, you know, as a beer professional? (laughs) It's a side gig. Um, I'm not a historian. I will say that is a very popular story. Um, So there's a lot of people who do do run with that. Uh, I haven't looked into the IPA enough in in terms of the history to know. I you'd have to have one of the brewers on. I suggest you do. They're highly interesting people. Um, but uh, it's the it's the one that I went with too, which okay, is good. Uh, when you're shipping around the horn, uh, things go bad. So on the tasting front, um, I was in Dijon, France as a young man with two of my buddies and we went to the Rothschild Winery and uh, signed up for a 60 wine tasting. And, um, <laughs> you know, they give you the spoon to chew the wine, you know, and swish it and spit it out. And we chose the American way to do it. We drank 60 wines, you know, not full glasses, you know, just a little taste. And so at the end, um, they had given us a cart. And so I collected a bottle, you know, 12 bottles of each one that I liked of the 60. And so I had my 12 bottles in the little cart and I set it on the counter and they're like, that would be $62,000. I'm like, what? <laughs> And so we're having this America French dilemma, which is common in the world. And I'm part of the reason, you know, the French people don't like Americans because I didn't understand the concept that one bottle represented a case. So they wanted to ship me 12 cases of wine and I just wanted these 12 individual bottles. So we're getting into it. I'm like, just put it in the box, man. My friend, Dave Lipnick, hope you're listening, Dave. He walks up to the cash register, what's the problem? And no joke throws up on the cash register. You've, I've never seen so much violence in a short amount of time. International incident almost um, occurred. We were ushered out quickly. 
But uh, that's my Rothschild uh, Dijon, France story. A town of culture and joy, but we brought our uh, pageantry to the day anyway. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank I, you. I, I, that, that's a unique one, man. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever heard it. I've been in a lot of tastings, beer tastings. I've never picked up anything and assumed that I'm picking up a case just by... Yeah, and the, up the small bottle. print was in French. I, I claim no responsibility. And I was a young man, too. So, um, we're on a desert island. We each have our own desert island. We can see each other. We can yell, tell jokes. But we've got no TV, no iPads. We've only got one beer for the rest of our lives. What's your one beer for the rest of your life going to be? Yeah, <laughs> that's a hard one. It's a really hard one. Um... I drink so seasonally, and honestly, in this year, I've... Well, it's always going to be summer on the island. I know, I know, but this year, I've also... I really will drink a one of anything, because I just kind of move on. I have so much that I'm trying to, to cover, but uh, probably my go-to would be a, an, uh, an ESB, which is a Extra Special Bitter, and... Um, it is not a particularly bitter beer, but it's a style that's low ABV. You can drink it all day long. Uh, it's kind of malt forward. Uh, and Deep Brewing made one um, called a Met- Electromagnetic uh, that we did in collaboration with uh, the Mag Lab here. We were trying to promote the Mag Lab, trying oh, to promote nice. uh, that style of beer. Um, the Mag Lab turned 25 this year, and so they were, or it was their 25th year, and so they were trying to find a way to, pr- a unique way to promote a beer and uh or promote the mag lab i apologize and they wanted a beer and so that was the one and it's a tasty beer you can drink it all day even when you're on a deserted island listening to great jokes and and <laughs> french wine tastings <laughs> oh, yeah there was lots of stories for D- from D- dijon france most of which we can't share on this pg rated program today <laughs> but um good stuff if i had to guess i'd say all day ipa you know i'd love to mention something local but it's such a fantastic beer, it and is. Uh, my wife and I have really enjoyed that and Sierra Nevada a lot lately. Great stuff, as well as La La Land and um, Bud Heavy, Coors Light. We're beer people. No, no, we love I'm, beer. I'm right there with you. I mean, ask me two minutes from now, I'll tell you something different. You know, it, it could be one from you could take me to through any brewery in Tallahassee. I could find you one that I'd say, yeah, that's my deserted island beer. That's my deserted island beer. Awesome. But, uh, that's the one that hits. That's one that kind of gives me a little personal pride, to be honest, too, because I was tied to that particular project. So, All right, let's um, talk pride. What yeah. are you most proud of with what you've accomplished with the society? Um, what's that shiny moment? Uh, an individual moment is really just prior to, to COVID would have been just sitting down and seeing increasingly more orders for local beer. So sitting in a restaurant and seeing maybe – one in every three table has a local beer on the table as opposed to cool. to maybe a Bud Light or a Budweiser. Um, so that, I mean, that type of, even just your story about La La Land, that's, a, that's another one of those. Just somebody thinking, here's a great thank you for coming out and talking to us, a local beer. Let's, uh, and, and I mean, you're from here, but for them to slide proof across the table, I love it. Like all those types of stories are the things that kind of give me pride because when we first started in this thing, uh, people were still really not quite going to the tasting rooms, not quite getting choosing a local beer over maybe uh, a Bud or a Bud Light. Um, they were getting there, but to see every time I see those individual decisions be made, there's a part that goes maybe they read the column or maybe they heard the radio show or maybe they follow us on social media. Um, and then any of the collaborative efforts. There's been a lot of charitable things that we've done. Uh, Danny's hustled down a lot of them. Uh, I've done a few. And any of those where I can bring philanthropy, Tallahassee, and collaboration and the beer all together, that's like, that's a total win. Huge. And you know, beer has health benefits also. I'm not sure if you're aware. Um, you know, beer can actually make you smarter because it did make Bud wiser. <laughs> Was that going to be the opener before? Uh, you know, it just came to me. I was thinking about <laughs> Susie and Trip Transu and the cool people at Triangle, and uh, you know, they're just distributing local products and that sure. sort of thing. And I just came up with that little gem. I thought I'd share it with you. So I hope everyone enjoyed. That's two jokes. You in did one well. Show. You nailed that one that off the good. off the dome. That's a that's a and that little pause too. Perfect Woo! comedic timing. Ric Flair. Woo! There we go. <laughs> awesome. So you're on the home front. You're chefing it up. 
Um, let's say grilling. What's your grill beer? You got to have a grill beer, right? Outdoor, pretty day. Uh, I like Ology's uh, Heliocentric. Uh, it's an IPA they have, or their Sensory Overload, which is probably more that you'll find. But how's, uh, the, how's the alcohol level in that? Uh, Heliocentric is, I believe, a double, so it's over eight. Okay. Um, sensory Overload is is sitting over six. Because um, I remember um, our friends to the south at Swamphead Brewery, uh, they had beer on tap at the Root Cellar. If you ever went into that spot when Ruben owned it, uh, they had Big Nose on tap. Oh, I didn't ask the question, you know, what's the alcohol content? You know, in the early rookie days of IPA drinking, knock back two of those bad boys and the walk home, which is normally two minutes, might take six. Uh, That's uh, There's always that hard introduction to uh, craft beer <laughs> hard and the, introduction. And the uh, like ABVs there. Yeah, believe me, I've, I've done a few. The, actually, Hooter Brown was the one for me. I actually sat up here at Fuma, the cigar bar, uh, ordered those. Uh, end on end for longer than I should have in terms of a session. And yeah, I was like, yeah, what's the ABV on that? And it's, it's that's, a, that's a heavy one for sure. And uh, yeah, I think all of us have at least that, hey, I used to drink Yingling. This doesn't quite hit the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to skip the sports commentary as uh, we don't want to talk about Marco Wilson and shoe throwing. Um, you know, and see John Morgan, you may be entitled to compensation if you've been traumatized by cleats. You can show that clip here, Josh. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> but uh, what kind of tunes are you listening to this fall? Uh, you, have you already started playing the the Celine, Celine Dion Christmas music? Or uh, what do we got? Uh, well, my wife skips. She's one of those that puts Christmas music in front of Thanksgiving if she can. Uh, Same. So, she, so, so she, she gets the Christmas music on there pretty early. Uh, me, I honestly, recently I'm listening to a lot of Croce. I don't know why. Um, but that's what's uh, is like in steady rotation, him, Cat Stevens, um, some Taylor, uh, but I have a really eclectic music list, so it really depends on what I'm doing at the time. Um, but for some reason, like throwing back to those old, like Arlo Guthrie and that type of stuff is what I've been hitting on. Nice. No one out there is going <laughs> to, maybe some people out there will know what I'm talking about, but, uh, there's a, a live dead concert I've been listening to that uh, a lot of deadheads and tapers say, you know, was their premiere show. Um, it was from a college, was it Rutgers? Um, like 71. Amazing, amazing That's show. Awesome. Uh, Spotify really opens the doors as far as whichever you want to hear, whenever. Which Spotify has been breached, tech tip, so change your password if you use that platform. Oh, and really? That's your PSA for today. <laughs> All right, well, before we close today, um, you know, you mentioned community um, and community service and the beer business. Can you share an example of how the beer business, the beer industry, a local brewery has reached out and partnered with, whether it's a not-for-profit or a cause, to uh, really help out Tallahassee and North Florida? You know, I think giving back is so huge this year. I think everybody's laser-focused on trying to help where they can. So anything you'd like to share, I think, would be a great closing story, if you will. Better than my raw child story. <laughs> I don't know if anything's going to top that. That was very engaging. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, just in general, if you are at any kind of beer festival that uh, where the primary benefactor is some type of charity, that beer's all donated. Um, it's brewed by the local brewer, obviously, hours, uh, labor-intensive, um, it is a capital intensive endeavor, endeavor, so that beer is expensive, uh, and they donate those. So that builds that margin up. If you're out there and you're tasting beer for maybe elder care services or um, you know different foundations that do things, uh, that beer's been donated. So that gives you a larger margin for them to work with. And that's so just like Tallahassee Beer Festival, for instance, all that's donated. Uh, a lot of times. Now of that times. one's a little bit different. Um, but, uh, but yeah, a lot of times all that beer is donated. Um, Tallahassee beer festival. There's a couple when he wants like a really exclusive beer that he will pay for some of those. Um, but that's just because that beer is not necessarily one you could potentially just give away if you're a right. brewer. Um, but specifically elder care services is probably my favorite one recently. Uh, Danny got every single one of those. You know, I said sometimes we cover 11 out to maybe 14, 15 breweries. Danny got every single one of them in one room um, for Elder Care Services Oktoberfest, which is their biggest fundraiser for the year. They came to us a yeah, few years ago. Yeah, we bought tickets many yeah. times over the years. Great yeah, event. they came to us a few years ago, and they wanted 
a home run idea, and the, the first home run was just to have a beer brewed specifically for it. It uh, ended up being Shallow End, which was a Kolsch. Uh, Deep did it um, and brewed a beer just for them, just for their VIPs to try and get that interest for a VIP ticket. Um, that since has gone into distribution, so that was that that did really well. That particular beer, huge, uh, yeah. But so they came to us last year and they said, "Look, that was the home run that year. What what can how can we top it?" Uh, and Danny said, "Look, what if we got every local in one room? All the VIPs can walk through and taste something a little bit from everybody." And at the time, people in the room, there were breweries that weren't even open yet. Um, so they came, Southern Fields came over from Jackson. They weren't even open. They put a beer in there. Um, we had, I think Salty Oak came over from Bay County. Howe Patter came over from Lake City. Brought all these area brewers into one room, all for a good cause to try and sell tickets to help elder care. That's Meals on Wheels. That's a whole, you know, I, I can't even speak to how much elder care services does. They do a ton. They We've fill done a meals huge on wheels void. As a company and it's uh, yeah, they fill a crazy. huge void in our community. And that's probably that is like the the real. Let's bring it all together. Every everybody in one room for one cause, but all for Tallahassee and and people in our community that really needed help. All for one, one for all. What a message! Awesome. Well, it's been one year of the Biz and Tech podcast. I can't thank you enough for supporting Aegis Business Technologies, uh, for our clients, for our guests that have been on the show, for our production team, uh, for you today, Matt. Thank you. It's been awesome. I wish you a sincere happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Festivus, and anything that you might celebrate, because all celebrations are worthy. And while you're celebrating, why don't you crack a cold one? We've got a couple of examples here for you to gaze at. Seriously. My sincere thanks for supporting this podcast. This is Blake Dowling signing off the last BizInTech podcast of the year. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2021. Stay safe. Get a vaccine. Go Gators. Go Gators.